Hi, welcome back to HANA Developer Channel. My name is Srikant. In this series of videos, I'm going to show you several workshops on HANA Access Advanced Server using Web IDE for HANA. Let me provide a little background to this concept. Uh, Access Classic has been HANA's application server for several years and it is deprecated in HANA 2.0 SP02 version, which is the current version available for customers. So there will be no new features provided in Access Classic server. All the new features are going to be provided or introduced in Access Advanced server. So with that, there's a lot of attention towards Access Advanced server using Web IDE for HANA. Web IDE for HANA is a new development tool to be used instead of HANA Studio or the web workbench we, we've been using traditionally in Access Classic. In this video, we are going to do several database object developments using Web IDE for HANA, like building CDS objects, calculation views, procedures, and SDA flow graphs, etc. I've got HANA Express Edition software to perform all these workshops. If you haven't heard about it, HANA Express Edition software is a free software available on from SAP, or which is on-premise or cloud platform. So it enables you to perform HANA developments on your personal, compu personal computer. For this video series, I've installed Express Edition, uh, HANA Express Edition, uh, on Google Cloud Platform, and it will access the cloud hosted virtual machine. It's a pay service. Let me show you the procedure to set up the Google Cloud Platform Ex Express Edition software on your computer. Go into the Google and type in HANA Express Edition and just say, okay, and then you get into the SAP website. Scroll to the bottom and you see Google Cloud Platform here. And then you got a step-by-step -step instruction page. Once you follow the steps in this page, and then you're good to go. You got your virtual machine set up uh, from Google Cloud Platform. Once my virtual machine is being set up, I go to the Google Cloud Platform to access my virtual machine got my favorites uh, shortcut uh, saved here. I go into the Google Cloud Platform. It usually asks user ID password and your Google ID and password are the credentials to get in there. And then I'm in Compute Engine there. I can see the virtual machine up and running. If you wanted to stop this, can choose this one. When you complete your work on this particular work mach virtual machine, you can choose to stop. And then you stop getting charged from Google Cloud. And then I will also go into the deployment manager to start my work. It's going to be available right here. I choose and then deployment. This is my deployment I already uh, performed according to this step-by-step uh, -step document procedure available in the previous document which I've shown you. So I choose this one and then say okay. I get into the this, this web page of the deployment. I got SSH console to open. Uh, just before opening the SSH, SSH console, I copy this command, little command here, just to provide the username uh, command in, in SSH console. It's connecting to the virtual machine now. Okay, and then I log in as a super user. That's a command to log in as a super user, and I logged in there. I can see what all the apps running currently by typing this command access apps. So you can see there's a bunch of apps up and running for different services uh, I'm going to use in Access Advanced. 
can see the service URLs to access those uh, websites or services uh, in order to do my work. I will start with uh, Access Administration Portal. Uh, I, I have already saved on my favorite, so I can directly go into any of the, oh, just before getting to my uh, web portal, I would like to start my HANA database in SSH console. So I go in there and type the command HDB start. So it's going to uh, start my HANA database, underlying HANA database. Once I make sure my HANA database is, is up and running, I go and access the admin console of XSA. Now it's fine, so I go into the access admin portal. So it says connection is not private, I'm okay. I go ahead and do this. Uh, I've got my access admin password, uh, user ID and credentials to log into the administration portal. Uh, this is the place you can see several tiles. It's a UIFI based application to do the access administration. So you can do the security for with the user and management. You can do the organization and space management and application roles. All the roles required for access advanced server developments you we can build in this this page. Um, yeah, and I can go into the application monitor and see what are the different applications running currently. Yeah, if I wanted to, you can see right here, if I wanted to start any other applic any application service, I can do that from by clicking this icon, start application. Uh, all my applications are running, so I'm good with this. I go back to the home page, and I can see user management. I got three users, of actually four users, admin and developer and then I set up my user ID. I can set up any new user directly in access administration or I can migrate a database user from the uh, HANA database platform. Uh, before setting up any user, I would like to see what are the predefined roles existing. For that, I will go into application role builder and then I can see these are the different applications we got uh, provided by SAP. And I also can see the different role available for us to choose. So let's say um, I wanted to see what is in Shine Admin. As a Shine, this is the uh, custom role I configured to have uh, Shine Content Admin privileges to the to this role. So there is a default one, which is Shine, uh, which is also having the same uh, ID, same application privileges. Similarly, there are several other roles created uh, which uh, have uh, access to do the access advanced developments here. And I go back to the home page again. I can also see the organization and space manage. Every developer will have a space to work on. So I, I created my own space development. So this space must be enabled for the users to do any work. So currently this is enabled for uh, XSE admin and XSE developer. I'm going to enable this for my user as well. So this is my user and then I say, okay. Now it's going to save it. Yeah, so I will be able to choose this development space to do my database object developments in WebID for HANA. All set up, I got my user ID set up with the, all the required roles. I can show you what are the, what are the roles. I've, I've got more than required roles. Opening this role collection, I got a whole bunch of even un, including the admin roles as well just to avoid any of the uh, other errors while I'm doing the further uh, developments of objects. Go to home page again. Uh, this is 
what I pretty much uh, wanted to show you in Access Ad Advanced Administration. Okay, I, the next thing I also wanted to show you the HANA cockpit admin. I can go into this other URL. Yeah, um, can see uh, system DB and this is HXC tenant database. This is my system database and uh, this is a tenant, this is a multi-tenant database system, distributed system. So I got to another tenant database, but most of my work is going to be in system database. So I'm not really worried on the tenant database here. So I go into the system DB and can see all the services, system database alerts, uh, CPU usage, everything. Oh, this is mostly an administrator job to monitor my system, or monitor the system. And yeah, this is the place the administrator will be looking at. I got a lot of different tools here. And you can see the host name here. Uh, with this host name, I can set up my application in a front-end client tool like Eclipse as well, or HANA Studio. Uh, just making a note here, uh, HANA Studio is deprecated, but still I can access the objects which are uh, created in Access Advanced, um, but there are going to be some inconsistencies going forward. Uh, we are already experiencing it, but we, I would suggest not to use any a, a traditional or the old development tools for uh, of access, which are like access class uh, which are like HANA studio or uh, Eclipse for doing the access here developments okay I go into the modeler I can see uh, there are two uh, user IDs already have set up so you can see my system user ID and this is my personal user ID. So I can log into any one of this. So this is actually configured uh, with the host name what I've got from uh, what I've got from uh, from the this page. Okay and log on. Sorry. Uh, the look and feel is going to be same. There is no change to it. But you get to see a lot of uh, schemas uh, newly introduced with Access Advanced in in this in this place. Uh, you also see several users created in the security. They are so uh, standard users uh, which are created as part of the Access Air, uh, in installation. Um, yeah, the access controls and privileges are um, is little different than what it used to be uh, with the introduction of HDI container, uh, which is HANA development infrastructure. And, um, this is uh, applicable to access advanced only. So you got to see a lot of uh, users and you got to create synonyms to access the database objects from one schema to other uh, and etc. There's going to be uh, some more um, knowledge required to work on the security and access related stuff in Access Advanced. We're, we're going to see this in the later uh, um, video. I can access Web ID for HANA using a web URL which I can find from the Access App Services in, in SSH console. So you can see the Web ID link right here. I can copy this and open a new window and then type in there. So it's going to ask me user ID and password. I will use my user ID which I'm accessing web ID for HANA ok 
can see uh, we got two perspectives here. One is development perspective, another one is the database perspective. So in my development perspective, I got a workspace. In this workspace, I'm going to create a project. It could be a database module objects, or it could be in web development or Node.js, server side, JavaScript as well. So after completing my developments, uh, I'm going to deploy all the development objects into a database using HDI container. HDI container is a mechanism which is used to uh, deploy the objects in a schemaless uh, development. Once the objects are develop, deployed in database, they become um, the uh, runtime objects. So during the object development, they are design time objects, and then with the deployment, it be, they become the runtime objects here. And another interesting feature of WebID for HANA is to have the source control with GitHub. With the GitHub, we got better source control options on the development objects. So multiple developers can work on uh, same object without affecting the other's work. So a lot of coordination uh, efforts can be reduced and multiple developers can work at the same time on the same object without uh, disturbing the other person's code. This is the, co the GitHub uh, integration uh, introduced in the WebID for HANA. That's about the introduction to WebID for HANA, an access advanced server. In my next video, I'll do a simple exercise, kind of a workshop to build several uh, CDS artifacts and then deploy them into database. On top of those database tables, we're going to build a simple calculation views and then display the data on those calculation views. That's about it. Thanks for watching this video.